people have it, but it's an instrument mic actually. So, so, so they can put that down. Thanks, lovely Julie, Mama Juju. So lovely to come here and see all you guys again. Um, so, once again, Red Hill Folk are very honoured to have been invited to, to open the Red Hill, uh, the, the Folk Redlands Christmas Bash. Now, the reason we picked our theme is because Christmas is often said to be for kids, so this year our program is Songs for Your Inner Child. So we hope that you will find your inner child somewhere during this 50 minutes. And we're inviting you to let that inner child out to have fun and to play and to sing along with us. So please don't wait to be asked. We may ask you as we go along, but just hop in if you hear something that, that you like, that, that's familiar to you. Laurie White, you will have met before, and he sang with us last Christmas. You might not remember that. Then you had Christmas, and that makes you forget a lot of stuff. So we're starting with Laurie White and an American Christmas song which was written in 1951 by Meredith Wilson. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, which in fact it is. Take it away, Laurie. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go. Take a look at the five and ten. Go listen once again. Candy canes and silver lanes aglow It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Boys in every store But the prettiest sight to see is The carol that will be at your own front door A pair of hobble on boots and a piss with the treats To wish your money then Also will talk and go for a walk So I hope that Janice and Jen And Mum and Dad can hardly wait the school to start again It's beginning to look like Christmas Everywhere you go There's a tree in the Grand Hotel One in the park as well A sturdy kind that doesn't mind the snow It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas The treats to wish your body in bed. And also we'll talk and go for a walk and go home with Janice and Jen. And mom and dad can hardly wait for school to start again. It's from St. Helena Island, Mary Had a Baby. Mary Had a Baby appears in Ruth Crawford Seeger's American Folk Songs for Children, which was published in 1948, and she cites as her source St. Helena Island Spirituals by N.G.J. Balanta, which was published in 1925, and that's the earliest we have of this as it's collected. And the pen, P.E.N., normal Industrial and Agricultural School, I love that title, of St. Helena Island, South Carolina. It's very, very popular with children's choirs. Could somebody give me whatever note I use? I do A. Give me an A for it. If you want to click along, please feel free. Give me that A Yes, Lord, the people keep a coming and the train has 
Lord, Mary, name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Mary, name of Jesus, yes, my Lord. Mary, name of Jesus, yes, Lord. The people keep a coming and the train has gone. Where was he born? Yes, Lord. Where was he born? Yes, my Lord. Where was he born? Yes, Lord. Born in the stable and the train has gone. Where did Mary lay him? Yes, Lord. Where did Mary lay him? Yes, my Lord. Where did Mary lay him? Yes, Lord. The lady made the major and the train has gone. Who heard the singing? Yes, Lord. Who heard the singing? Yes, my Lord. Who heard the singing? Who heard the singing? Yes, Lord. Shepherds heard the singing and the train has gone. Who came to see him? Yes, Lord. Who came to see him? Yes, my Lord. Who came to see him? Yes, Lord. Shepherds came to see him and the train has gone. Star keeps to shine. Yes, Lord. Star keeps to shine. Yes, my Lord. Star keeps to shine. Yes, Lord. The people keep the coming and the train has gone. The wise men knew before him. Yes, Lord. The wise men knew before him. Yes, my Lord. The wise men knew before him. Yes, Lord. The people keep the coming and the train has gone. King Herod tried to find him. Yes, Lord. King Herod tried to find him. Yes, my Lord. King Herod tried to find him. Yes, Lord. The people keep the coming and the train has gone. Moving in the elements, yes, Lord. Moving in the elements, yes, my Lord. Moving in the elements, yes, Lord. The people keep the coming and the train has gone. They went away to Egypt, yes, Lord. They went away to Egypt, yes, my Lord. They went away to Egypt, yes, Lord. The people keep the coming and the train has gone. Traveled on a donkey, yes, Lord. Traveled on a donkey, yes, my Lord. Traveled on a donkey, yes, Lord. The people keep the coming and the train has gone. Angels watching over him, yes, Lord. Angels watching over him, yes, my Lord. Angels watching over him, yes, Lord. The people keep the coming and the train has gone. The people keep the coming. John and Sandra Tucker, who you know, um, they come down here and sing, and they're also known as Mia Modicum when they when they when they are performing together, and they're singing a song. Thank you. They're singing a song <laughs> um, written by Lee Mendelssohn and Vince Guaraldi, which was from the 1965 TV special of Charlie Brown Christmas. And you all know this, it's Christmas time is here.
So I think Brad's come down here and done various sets too, or maybe one set at least. Um, one set? No, more than one set. This is Brad Jones, and he is going to sing The Little Drummer Boy. Originally this was known as The Carol of the Drum. It's a popular Christmas song written by American classical music composer and teacher Catherine Kennicott Davis in 1941, and was first recorded in 1951 by the Trap family singers. resident storyteller and I don't mean she tells a lot of fibs or anything no she tells wonderful wonderful stories folk stories and modern stories Thank you. and she is going to tell us the story of the mice and the Christmas tree so over to you Meg thank you thank you uh, the story I'd like to tell you actually began as a carol in 1946 
a Norwegian, a famous writer, a, a literary man, a, an author, a broadcaster on the radio, wrote a carol, a Christmas song, and it's become part of the Norwegian tradition. It was called the Muskevisa, and the author, the singer, the, the writer, was someone called, in English, Al Poison, but in Norwegian, Ulf Dreisen. And his carol was called Luskevida, as I said, and the story that he went on then to write for children became part of his series of little short stories, which if you had a school library that had little Mrs. Pe Pepperpot there, they were in those collections of stories. And this is the narrative that goes with the carol which goes something like this. Long, long ago, well, maybe just last year, there was a family of mice who lived in a gap in the wall behind the pantry of an old wooden house way up in the heart of Norway. These mice had lived in that secret hole for many generations. They knew how to live. They knew they watched the humans to see how they did things. So when Yule came around, they knew it was a special time. On that morning of Christmas Eve, they all got out the family, the seven children, Grandma, Pa, and Ma, and they swept the little hole clean with their tails. And they sang little songs as they did it. And when it was all swept and clean, the floor just perfect, Ma would give the nod and Pa trundled in the big old pine cone that they kept secret. They only ever brought it out every year, and this was their tree. Pa would then drag in some cobwebs he'd hung on the wall and drape it over the pine cone to make it look like tinsel. And then when it was all finished and the little mice children all thought it was wonderful and nodded, they had to stand in a line in front of their tree and Ma would come down the line and give each little mouse king a nut. Some years it was a peanut, this year it was an almond. We got an almond each. And then, when we nibbled down that almond, Ma came back along the line with a piece of fatty bacon, and she held it under their sensitive little noses and let them have a good long sniff each. And then it was time to do what Norwegians love to do, and that's dance around the Christmas tree. Now the mice held on to each other's tails, but the humans just joined hands. So the mice held on to each other's tails, and they skipped around the tree, singing every Christmas song they knew. And then when they finished all the songs, and time was wearing on, they decided to play Blind Man's Bar. And they played and played, and then till Ma and Pa said, that's it now. It's dark. The snow has stopped falling. Everything's quiet. It's time to go to bed. And it was then that the eldest mousekin said, No, I don't want to go. <laughs> the mother and father said, What? Oh, our Christmas is over. It's time to go to bed. Now come on, off you go. No, said the eldest. And then the littlest one crept forward and said, we want to go to the big front room and see the real Christmas tree. He saw it through a crack in the skirting cord. <laughs> the mother was shocked. She had warned her mousekins very often not to go into the human side of the house. But the father was looking, well, Christmassy. And he said, it's Christmas. I'll, I'll look after them. We'll, we'll go quickly and quietly. And all the mousekins nodded. And they followed the father, for he knew the secret trail that read between the panels of the walls, all the way out of the pantry, out of the kitchen, down the hall, and into the front room. And when they came out through the crack in the scaling board, the, <gasps> the little mice, It was enormous. It went all the way up to the roof and it was covered with flags, red flags, you know what the Norwegian flags are like, red flags, blue flags and, and tinsel and ribbons and ah, oh, it was just, and then the little one said, 
but where's the where's the shining light she told us about? And it was true, there were no shining, twinkling lights on this big tree. But it was then that, I forgot to tell you, Ma Mouse was a bit slow and she was just coming or trying to get through the crack in the scouting board, but she had a very big tummy. We know why, don't we? And she couldn't get through. She felt dizzy. She, she leaned out against the wall and found a string and she just happened to grab hold of it to steady herself. And as luck would have it, the lights all came on the tree. All the mice children squealed with delight and skittered across the floor, straight towards the tree. <gasps> they ran around it one way and the other. They talked about what they could see. Mother Mouse was saying, be quiet, be quiet, someone might hear you. But they got too excited and there were parcels underneath the tree. And I don't know who it was that found the trunk. But in no time at all, Dad was in the cab, and all the little mice were in the back. <laughs> and Dad, somehow or other, maybe it was wound up, or maybe the battery just had a switch, but Dad got it going, and off it went, around the Christmas tree. The mice in the back were singing and screaming, and off it went round the tree, and oh, what a treat. They'd never had anything like this before for Christmas. And as they were coming around the tree, it was then that the big door opened and into the room walked a big, fat, brown cat with a tail that went just so. Dad just about had connections. He quickly turned it, he turned it so hard that it started to go in a circle. Round it went and he headed for the tree. The cat kept coming. Dad kept driving around the tree. And when they got round the next time, there was the cat on the mat. As soon as the truck came near, whoosh, tried to catch it. All the mouse skins all squealed and clung together in the back. But off they got again, safe and sound, round the back. Came round again the front, here's the cat. Ah, another pat with a paw. They were so scared and got even more scared because the truck began to slow down. <gasps> Dad, luckily, managed to steer the truck in amongst the parcels and said, when it stops, everybody out and up the tree. Well, you should have seen those little mice. <laughs> up the tree they went, and soon they were little, hanging like little grey <laughs> ornaments on the tree. And the cat got up from the mat and looked at them and said, mm -hmm. Come on down. No, we won't, said the eldest mouse kid. We know what you're like. You torment people like us. No, 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 no. We're not coming down. We know about you. We've heard the stories. And the mouse oh, squealed a little bit more. And the cat sank back on its mat and said, Well, look. This is the only day of the year when I am kind to mice. It's Christmas Eve. You're safe enough. And you make sure you go back to where you come because if I see you tomorrow, I won't be keeping you safe. And I saw froze. And they watched as the cat got up to its feet and slunk across the floor and out of the door and closed it with a click. <gasps> well, Dad didn't have to say too much. Mum was faint at the skirting board. She couldn't believe her darlings had been in so much danger. They all skittered across to where she was and off they went back home. When they got home, Mum lined them up in front of the tree and said, now look, you must promise to me you will do as you are told by your parents. You will not go into the human part of the house and you will not ever give cheek to the cat. <laughs> and all the little mice said, we promise. <laughs> and then from their pockets, they took out little bits of tinsel, a red flag, a blue ribbon, little bits of silver things they found on the tree and they went up and stuck them there. And to this day, they say, Whenever Christmas comes around, the tree in the mice's place looks beautiful 
and they tell the story of how it came to be one Christmas not so very long ago. <laughs> heard that story before at Red Hill folks, so that was a surprise for all of us. That was gorgeous. Um, right. Now, we're going to have Laurie back. And he's going to sing Here Comes Santa Claus, which was written by, this may surprise you, Gene Autry. He's a famous cowboy singer, radio writer, actor, songwriter. And the music is by Oakley Had Had Haldeman. Haldeman which you won't remember, you'll just remember Gene Autry, I know. Autry's original version was a top ten hit on the pop and country charts and the song went on to be covered many times in the subsequent decades. Autry got the idea from the so for the song after riding his horse in the 1946 Santa Claus Parade, which is now the Hollywood Christmas Parade in Los Angeles, when he heard the crowds of spectators chanting, Here comes Santa Claus! And you know he's riding his horse and he's hearing this. Meg, have you got your whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Official bell ring. to lovely Jeff and Chucky who are doing the sound today. We've been working very hard all, all afternoon for you to make us sound lovely. Oh, 
Oh, I love the, 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 the pigs being... Just love that. That's fantastic. Um, okay, uh, this is an English Christmas carol. And it's a traditional carol, and it's called I Saw Three Ships. The earliest printed version is from the 17th century, although, and although the lyrics mention the ships sailing into Bethlehem, the nearest body of water is the Dead Sea, which is about 20 miles away. <laughs> I know. I wonder actually if they actually knew very much, but then when you consider all the crusades and everything else, they pretty well knew what, what the geography was in that area. So, the three ships are thought to refer, refer possibly to the three ships that bore the purported relics of the biblical magi to the Cologne Cathedral in the 12th century. Another theory is, and it's only a theory, mind you, that they are actually the camels used by the Meiji because camels are frequently referred to as the ships of the desert. I learned this as a child and it's always been one of my very, very favorite and always reminds me of Christmas as a child, my childhood Christmases. You probably know a different version, um, which is more a choir sort of version, but this is the way I know. Get just the words. We've got the little green tags here. Oh, there I am. Right. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day. On Christmas Day, I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day in the morning and what was in those ships all three on Christmas Day on Christmas Day what was in those ships all three on Christmas Day in the morning Jesus Joseph and Mary on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day, Jesus Joseph and Mary on Christmas Day in the morning. Pray with the sail of those ships all three on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. Pray with the sail of those ships all three on Christmas Day in the morning. Oh, they sailed into Bethlehem on Christmas Day. Christmas Day, let us all rejoice. 
it is. Now, here is one that's a favourite of John's from John's childhood. If I can find it. <laughs> And it's called Christmas Alphabet. Some of the lower pretentious stuff in my time. <laughs> he had an inner child. Look, he's got an inner child. We've always been worried about Brad, but John's got an inner child. Right? <laughs> okay. We were worried about Brad when he decided to put forward his songs for today for his inner child, for songs for inner child. And I tell you, I can't tell you what some of them were like. Um. <laughs> um, um this is Christmas Alphabet, and it's written by Buddy Kay and Jules Lohman in 1955. It became the UK number one on the 16th of December that year and stayed there for three weeks. It's also the first Christmas number one. That was actually about Christmas. So, <coughs> Christmas Alphabet. <laughs> With all the family, R is for the reindeer prancing by the window pane. I is for the icing on the cake and sweet as sugar cane. S is for the stocking hanging on the chimney wall. T is for the toys beneath the tree so tall. M is for the mistletoe where everyone is kissed. A is for the angels who make up the Christmas list. S is for the Santa who makes every kid his pet. Be good and they'll bring you everything in your Christmas alphabet. Capital C is for the randy trimmed around the Christmas tree. H is for the happiness with all the family. R is for the reindeer prancing by the window pane. R is for the icing on the cake of sweet and sugar cane. S is for the stocking hanging on the chimney wall. T is for the toys beneath the tree so tall. M is for the mistletoe where everyone is kissed. A is for the angels making up the Christmas list. S is for a Santa who makes every kid his pet. Be good and he'll bring you everything in your Christmas alphabet. and his wife, Gloria Shane Baker, wrote Do You Hear What I Hear in October 1962 as a plea for peace during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Do you remember the Cuban Missile Crisis? Regney had been invited by a record producer to write a Christmas song, but he was hesitant due to the commercialization of the Christmas holiday. However, it has sold tens of millions of copies and been covered by hundreds of artists. And we have Brad back with the gold capo. <laughs> and he is going to sing, Do You Hear What I Hear? <laughs> Said the night wind to the little lad Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lad Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? A star, very star Dancing in the night A tail as big as a kite To the shepherd boy 
Do you hear what I hear? Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy. Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? The song, the song, high above the tree, with a voice as big as the sea. Shepherd boy to the mighty king. Do you know what I know? In your palace, warm, mighty king. Do you know what I know? Do you know what I know? A child, a child. Shivers in the cold Let us bring in silver and gold Let us bring in silver and gold Said the king to the people everywhere Listen to what I say Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. Listen to what I say. A child, a child, sleeping in the night. favourites that need no introduction, so I'm not even going to try. Please do sing along with us. Oh, ah, I said it. Please do sing along with us. Oops, not that. I'll get there. And, um, it's, uh, you want to give us an E Thought that I was tucked up in my bedroom fast asleep. 
Christmas Bash. We are Laurie White, <coughs> Samuel Tucker, John Tucker, Brad Jones, Meg Phil, and I'm Anne Affond, and I run it, uh, Red Hill Folk. I just forgot what I ran there for a minute. <laughs> oh, it all passes like a dream. We don't, Anne. Yeah. <laughs> Our last song was written by Hugh Martin and Ralph Blaine and sung by Judy Garland in the 1944 MGM musical Meet Me in St. Louis. Or St. Louis, if you want to say that. Frank Sinatra later recorded a version with modified lyrics, which is the version that most people now sing. It's the most popular version. And it is our Christmas wish for you all. And we would just like to wish you a very merry, merry little Christmas. Have you said? A merry little Christmas Let your heart be light From now on our troubles will be out of sight Have yourself a merry little Christmas Make your yuletide gay Now on your troubles will be miles away. 